Baptist Church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's good to see all of you this morning. And greetings to those who are following us online. Please, at the beginning here, if you would silence your cell phones. Um, know that there are response cards in each pew if you would like to uh, put a prayer request or ask for information about our church. Fill that out and put it in the offering basket later, walking plate later in the service. There's also a code on there if you want to scan it and do it online. And there will be a Stephen minister at the altar at the conclusion of the service to pray if you, if you would like that. Uh, as we enter into this uh, first week of Lent, Lent began last week with Ash Wednesday. We have our first uh, regular Lenten luncheon coming up at noon on Wednesday. Uh, service, uh, Michael will be, uh, Pastor Michael will be our speaker, and then we'll be following that with lunch downstairs. So I hope you'll be able to come to that. Uh, the Lenten Bible study that Pastor Susan is uh, leading will start tomorrow at 1.30. Tomorrow at 1.30, and she asked me to remind you, if you're in it, to please read the first chapter so you're ready when you get there, so you don't sit there and get lost. <laughs> please read the first chapter of that wonderful book. It's a great book. i got a copy of it myself. Uh, if you would note the insert, on one side of the insert, it mentions creation, care, activities you can do during Lent. And the other one is about our monthly offering, and Patty Peoples is going to talk to us about that today. Hope you'll take a moment 
and during, uh, you can leave it in the offering plate, you can go online, uh, leave it at the Wednesday service, whatever. And then Mission will be uh, doing the Lenten lunch this week, put in the plug for that, and those proceeds will all go to the Thank you, Patty, very much. Thank you so much. I have a couple of announcements that are uh, relevant to young people in our church, and so if you have a child or a grandchild to whom this might be of interest, the high school scholarship applications are in the church office. Uh, our church does fund scholarships for, for high school seniors, so if you've got someone that that is relevant to, come by our office and pick up forms. Also, at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, we're having Boy Scout recognition. So come by and uh, see our scouts. They'll be greeting people before the 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock services, bringing the flags in and giving us an update on their activities here at the church. Hymns and Hops at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the Brown Pelican. Um, please note on your Friday greetings our request for leads on custodian or cleaning companies. We're looking for reliable people to come in and help clean our church because we are currently uh, using an interim custodian and we would like to find a permanent solution to that. So if you know anybody, we would like to hear because many of you have contacts and leads that we uh, would find very useful. Finally, the 250th anniversary DVD is ready and it's wonderful. And there are copies available in the office and outside the history room. And Michael, if I'm correct, Mary said that these are free. Is that correct? That's correct. These are free. So if you don't already have one, pick up a 250th DVD. It has uh, things from throughout the entire year. This is not the same as the DVD from the celebration over at the History Center. That's a different DVD. This is the activities that went on throughout the year. So pick up your copy of that. Please read the rest of our bulletin. There are many opportunities there for you to learn and serve. Um, we try to make those available at Centenary United Methodist because we're in the business of making disciples for Jesus Christ. And now, friends, may you become more aware of God's presence. And may God bless you during this service and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Please stand if you're able and join me in the opening prayer, which is in your bulletin. Holy One, we are constantly bombarded with temptations and enticements. When we yield, when we fail, who will help us? You, Lord, have come to our aid. You teach us, counsel us, and guide us in the ways we should go. We rejoice in your unfailing love. Amen. The hymn is number 158. Come, Christians, join to sing. Christ. 
Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. <clears throat> for just as through the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so through the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Please rise as you are able to receive the gospel of the Lord. The gospel is found in the fourth chapter of Matthew, the first 11 verses. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was found. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And thanks be to God. Of our fathers in the faith. 
They, and the, and the, the weird thing is that they've been dead for over a millennium already. And as they're talking, Christ is literally shining bright. And Peter, James, and John are there to witness this bigger than a bucket list type of an event. As all of this is going on, Peter looks over at Jesus talking. It says, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, we can make three dwelling places. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. <clears throat> and while he was speaking, suddenly a cloud envelops him. You guys remember this story last week, right? A cloud envelops him. And they hear a mysterious voice that says, This is my son, my beloved. In him I'm very pleased. Listen to him. This cloud, this ominous voice, it had to have been terrifying for those disciples. Peter, who obviously hasn't been paying attention because he wants to build these three dwelling places, perhaps God in this cloud is, is very kindly telling Peter to hush his mouth in the nicest way possible. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> Peter was with the two other disciples, and they were confused by this interaction and what it meant. As he talks about building some kind of shrine. A monument to the moment is what Peter wants to build. Instead of a testament to the heart. This is followed by Jesus telling the disciples, Okay guys, hop up, it's time to go. We've got work to do. Let's head down the mountain. Which brings us to the gospel lesson that we just heard a few moments ago. Um... It's certainly not a mountaintop experience, this temptation that Jesus faces. It does, however, invite us to peer in and investigate temptation, sin, right, and wrong as we travel down into the valley. On this first Sunday in Lent, we're in a season that lasts 40 days. The period of time is based on the 40 days that Christ spent in the wilderness, fasting and being tempted by the devil. It's a serious time for us to contemplate, to pray, to listen for God's voice, to fast, to repent, and to grow. Forty days, that's a long time to go without eating a thing at all. A long time to be tempted. Fortunately, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit during this encounter. So we join Jesus on this trip from the hilltop down to the valley. This desert, this dark, desolate place, it might resemble the valley of the shadow of death. Christ is being stalked by state, Satan even as he enters the wilderness to face trial and temptation. He's forced to endeavor hot and cold extremes, hunger, thirst, solitude, wild animals, and the threat of being in the wrong place in the wrong time in this unforgiving environment. And remember that this spirit that led Jesus into the desert place to face the tempter. It's the same spirit that just before was descending upon him like a dove and alighting on him. The same spirit that descended upon him has now led him into the wilderness to face this nightmare. He's been declared the Son of God. His deity has been proven. And after being declared the Son of God, the devil addresses him, as, addresses him as such when he tempts him to eat, when he tempts him to drink, when he tempts him to rule the entire earth, when he's trying to lead through love, humility, and grace. When Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, he's not necessarily left there, though. Is the Spirit with Jesus during this temptation? I think, obviously. How could the Spirit not be? God, not Satan, is initiating this encounter. It was God who led Jesus to where the next mission was. Sometimes the calling in our lives is much more difficult than other times. Sometimes we're challenged with challenges that grow and develop our faith before we are able to go out and effectively witness to others, do a good work of helping others discover and pursue their own faith. Friends, 
The wilderness is not only a physical place, but a spiritual place. A place where somebody's tested. A place where your world can be turned upside down while you try to navigate. We've all visited the wilderness in our faith lives, haven't we? The desert often finds its way into our spiritual into our spirituality. The importantly though is what we've done or are doing through that wilderness period, that desert time, and how we find ourselves forming and being formed on the other side. How do we fare when being tempted? Tempted to not following the way. Tempted to not following Christ. When we think we know the best path for our lives. When we've got it all under control. Has it, have any of you ever thought that you had it all under control? Only to find God really back in and let you know that God's in control. I want to share this with you. In his book, The Road to Character, David Brooks tells the story of Augustine. You all know Augustine, the fourth century theologian. Augustine deeply desired fame and status, it says, but found that these things didn't make him happy. Nothing he was accomplishing as a philosopher was giving him the contentment that he desired. Brooks says, left to ourselves, we often desire the wrong things. Whether it's around the dessert train or in the late night bar, we know we should choose one thing but end up choosing another. We understand our long-term interests, but end up pursuing short-term pleasures. Even good things, such as friendship, will leave us unsatisfied if the friendship is not attached to something higher. In the end, Augustine turned to God and said, Our heart is restless until it finds rest in thee. Nothing in this world can give us the rest and the peace that only God can give. And this is why Jesus said no to authority over all kingdoms. And yes to worshiping and serving God alone. After all these temptations, the devil departs from Jesus. And Jesus comes through this game of thrones of sorts. By letting go of some things while finding others. In the end, he finds much more than he loses. Amen? Amen. And the same is true for us. We can find real nourishment in the Word of God, in the teachings that show us the path to deep and lasting satisfaction through Christ. We can find rest and peace through God and God alone. And we can find safety and find security in a right relationship with God, one that's rooted in serving. As always, Jesus shows us the things that are worth finding and what we should be willing to lose. Amen. Let's pray. God of deliverance and God of freedom. You taught the people of Israel to acknowledge that all things come through your bountiful hand. Lord, keep in our faith so that we may resist temptation and in the midst of trial proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, now and forever. Amen. If you would, let us stand in our hymn in 357, just as I am, without one foot.
to make your presence known to each and every one of us at the times we need most to know that presence. Help us to respond to that presence with commitment, with acknowledgement, with dedication to do the things that you call us to do, even when we're not sure why, or even if we're not sure exactly in what form. Help us, Lord, to be your people, to be your hands and your feet 
at this time in this place. To be your voice. To be your children. It is as your children that we are bold to pray. The prayer that we taught so long ago, <coughs> it is always coming. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we give us not into temptation.
Hymnal 2158, 1 and 3. I heard 
Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our hymn is number 292. What wondrous love is there? 292. What wondrous love is there?